from the News Channel 5 Network. This is the plus side of Nashville. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. You know, for seniors looking for something fun and exciting to do, whether it's bingo, arts and craft, exercise, even a dinner show, then look no further. 54 Donaldson Station has something for pretty much everyone. We'll talk about the many activities they offer, as well as the Larry King Theater, which operates under the organization and offers some fantastic theatrical shows. But first, I moved to Nashville 33 and a half years ago, so I've witnessed firsthand the change and the tremendous growth Music City has gone through. Well, whether you've lived here over three decades like I have, or you're new to the city of Nashville, you enjoy a look at the way 30 years through the eyes of Lynn's photographer um, Hank DeVito uh, has shown us. Hank currently has an exhibition at the Tennessee State Museum. There's a walk down memory lane for us long timers and a fascinating look at Nashville's history for others. And I'm happy to welcome Hank DeVito to the show along with Lois Riggins Ezel, who is the executive director of the Tennessee State Museum. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Well, happy I, to be it's, here. It's always a pleasure to have you, Lois, and it's such an honor to get to meet someone whose work we get to go to the museum and see. Well, thank you. That's you're, very nice. you're very welcome. I love the fact that you're capturing that period of time when I first moved to Nashville. You and I were right there together. 34 years ago, yeah. So what brought you to Nashville in the 80s? Uh, well, I'm a professional musician as well as a photographer. And uh, I moved from Los Angeles to Music City because the band I was working in had a couple of musicians who lived here already. Uh -huh. So I thought... I'll just move down there with them. It's a lot nicer to live in, in Nashville than it was in Los Angeles. And I brought my camera with me. So were you always a photographer, sort of like an amateur photographer at heart? Right. I mean, I went to art school. I was a graduate of the School of Visual Arts in New York. And uh, when I hit the road as a touring musician, I always took my camera with me. So the Nashville photos are actually part of a larger uh, project that I've been calling Urban Landscapes, where okay. I would always have the afternoons off before concerts. I would walk around downtowns in the, in the America and Europe and document storefronts, hand-painted signs, which are a dying art now. I mean, that's, it's an art form that's sort of long gone yeah. with the age of digital this and digital that. Well, what inspired you to, to take photos of the, the specific locations that are included in the exhibit? Right. What was it about those particular locations? Well, in 81, when I started this project, uh, Nashville had a small town feel, a small southern town feel. Yeah. And I always loved, on the tour buses, we'd always pass the, uh, uh, you know, Sea Rock City barns which were these gigantic hand-painted signs on the side of barns. So when I got to town, uh, I, I usually would take Sundays because there was less cars in front of the mom and pop shops and document hand-painted signs or interesting storefronts. And that's what intrigued me most about yeah. it. it. It sort of comes from, uh, there was a pho photographer in the 30s named Walker Evans who was assigned to document the South for the Farm Security Administration. And uh, he called it documenting our social history. So that's what I thought I was doing, Yeah, documenting our social history. <laughs> well, you did a great job. Thank you. So, Lois, what was it about Hank's <clears throat> uh, photographs that inspired the museum to want to build a whole exhibition around them? Well, I'm a native Nashvilleian. I'm a fifth-generation Nashvilleian. So my roots are deep in, in my community. And I remember I first saw Hank's work at the Zimmerman Saturn Gallery down on 2nd Avenue. It was one of the early art galleries in Nashville, Tennessee. I and I, it was mostly colored photography and a mix of black and white. And I just fell in love with it. What he did was he captured our country town with its thin veneer of civilization. And he made it come alive. And it was capable of seeing all of the places that you want to remember now. So when I walk out on the floor, it's almost hard not to have a lump in my throat because these are the stories of my past. You all are so Nashville now, right. but I have been Nashville and all those places were a part of my life. We are now capturing that for future generations because we have acquired this entire show in its entirety for our archival collection at the Tennessee oh. State Museum. So in a hundred years from now, you'll be able to see 
Hank DeVito's <laughs> vision of what Nashville was when he first arrived and began to capture the city as it existed in its, with its first growing pains, the first time that it started to stretch and move and become a new place that it is today. Wow, well, you met you. I love listening to Lois describe things. Ditto. How, many, how many photos are in this actual exhibition? There's 60, 60. And, and and they're so wonderful. It's yeah. it's it's buildings that have long been gone, and then occasionally you'll run upon one that's been saved, yeah. and you're you're like. It's almost a miracle. You think, oh my, they saved the Acme Food, uh, they saved the farm supply store. Oh, how wonderful. They found a second use for this, an adaptive use for this. Uh, Hat show print has survived. And you look at all the great places that Hank captured, and it, it, it's going to give you a look, a panoply of spirits of where we've been and how we changed. And then you look at Nashville today. And there's there's no comparison. Right. Occasionally, you'll see a tiny glimpse of one of those buildings. Uh, occasionally is correct. Occasionally, yeah, yeah. yeah the city that, that we moved into right. uh, knowing uh, has totally changed from before. Are you continuing, Hank, to capture this video, these photos of? Well, Andrew? I've had I had such a backlog of negatives from 40 years of touring, and uh, I'm finding that. Those negatives, or back when I took the photos originally, I may have printed one negative off a sheet of 36 exposures. I've rediscovered my own archives. So instead of printing or working on new material, I'm actually looking back at my old source and I'm reconnecting with them and I printing love it. them. Yeah. I love old black and whites and, and it's just nostalgic right. to be able to look back and reminisce. Oh, I remember the time I went here and, and to be able to even tell the folks that, uh, that have come to visit. This right. used to be that. Uh, right. So this is going to be a great journey for You're folks, love Lois. That show. What do you hope that people will take away when they come to see your photos? Well, you know, it's been a year in the works for this. And, and it's amazing within the past year how many buildings have either been knocked down by the, the wrecking ball or almost got knocked down. I'm thinking about the RCA studios yeah. and all that. And this has only happened in the past year. There seems to be a great renaissance of hotels and condos, which is great progress, but at what cost? So I hope people will take away the fact that maybe we should be saving some of our history. Absolutely. Do you have any favorite stories that are tied into any one of your photos? Um, well, I like, I think it's the Acme Farm Supply that I love the most because it's still here. Oh, yeah. It's in a little different configuration. Yeah. In my photo of it, there's all the feeds and all the, uh, the supplies out on the, on the sidewalk. And now it's a restaurant, but the essence of it with the Purina checkerboard is still there. So that, that makes me happy. I know. That it's still around. I love that too. Yes. What about you, Lois? Uh, you know, growing up around here and, 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 and seeing a lot of, of the city changes. Are there any favorite stories behind any of, of Hank's photos? For Everyone. You? Everyone. <laughs> Almost. But Aww. I'd say, I'd have to say Candyland, maybe, because oh, yeah. Candyland was a place you went after the sock hop at the YMCA, <laughs> and you would go down there and have your malt or your, your soda, and you'd spend the last of the evening before you caught the bus home, because mm -hmm. that's how you got home from Candyland. Land, and it looks exactly like it did. A second photograph I would have to mention is the Banner Cafe because my father was a waiter at the Banner Cafe oh. while he was in law school. He was going to the Nashville Law School. I think it was called Watkins at the time. And he was in law school there and he, ser he served lunch at the Banner Cafe. So when I, I remember going there really as a very small child mm -hmm. and seeing my daddy. And wow. getting a lot of takeout. All right. <laughs> but there's so many right. wonderful things like that. Every Nashvilleian that has been here from the time y'all came until the people who have been here for generations will feel those same feelings when they see I, this I, exhibit. I think you're absolutely right. There's a photo of the Banner Cafe. There I don't it is. think I ever got a chance oh. to see that, but I know that brings special memories back. Oh, it does. You, it does. Me. Well, let's point out, this is going to be, um, this exhibition is going to be July 3rd. Yes, ma'am. Through October 7th. Yes, So folks will have a nice long time to visit. Come on down. And Come the on. beauty, it's free. Yes. You do not have to pay anything uh, to see this, so I love that about it. Yes, um, sort of moving to another whole area, I'm very excited about something that, that, that may, we, we may be able to share with folks before anybody else has heard about, but there's a new museum possibly in the works, Lois? Well, I think 
We have a governor this year that is, or this, this is his second term, and he is a passionate man about history and our common heritage. And he has become very excited about taking our museum out of the basement, making it an above ground place where all citizens can come and revel in their history and in their common heritage. And yes, we are looking towards a new building on the Bicentennial Mall. Because that would and be awesome. And for folks who may not, the Tennessee State Museum is with TPAC. It's, it's located right there next to it, but it's like in the basement of it. I said I've spent my life in the basement of a museum. <laughs> First in the War Memorial and now in, in TPAC. But we won't be in the basement. I think the one thing I hope would be the administrative offices will have windows. <laughs> oh, wow. Would but it be will nice? be a great museum, and it will tell the story of all Tennesseans, all types of people, and all different experiences, art and culture and photography and work and labor and war and peace, all the things that make Tennessee the great state that it is. Because, as I always say, Tennessee's history is really America's history. Yes. It it's, absolutely It's a is. microcosm of America's history. So how wonderful that there is the potential for having this above ground where everyone can come and see it and celebrate that common heritage. Well, no matter where you are, you're doing great work. And, and Hank's exhibit is something that I would encourage everyone, please go out and see it. It's, it's just fascinating. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Thank you. And always, Lois, a pleasure to have Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You both. Thank you. When we come back, we'll tell you about a fun place where seniors can go and do everything from Zumba to bingo to bead weaving. We'll also talk about some of the upcoming shows at one of the highest attended theaters there. So stay with us.